Apple trees are subject to a number of different canker diseases. Uh, these are caused by various opportunistic fungi. Uh, in any typical season, they're fairly sporadic in occurrence, and they're also sporadic in occurrence on different apple cultivars. Uh, one of these diseases is Nectria twig blight, and that's caused by a fungus named Nectria cinnabarina. And here we're showing a, a large example of Nectria twig blight. Actually, in this case, it's taken out large, larger shoots on the tree. This is a Macintosh tree. And uh, what, what the Nectria fungus does is it, it forms shallow cankers in the branches, but these cankers eventually girdle the branches, and then that causes the death that you see here. Uh, the symptoms of Nectria twig blight are very similar to fire blight uh, in that we, it, we see a general wilt symptom. There are no specific control recommendations for Nectria canker. Uh, the best thing, as with any apple canker disease, pruning and removal of the infected limbs, burning those limbs to prevent uh, continued sporulation of the fungus from those limbs. Uh, practices pruning at, at times that uh, promote rapid wound healing to prevent colonization of those wounds. And uh, other cultural practices that help prevent winter damage will also prevent uh, winter injury and that again was conducive to colonization by this opportunistic fungus. By midsummer, numerous small orange to pink fruiting structures form on the cankers and dying tissue. We're still in early June here now so these structures are not quite as uh, developed. Uh, they're not showing fully that orange color which is very prominent. These colorful structures are called sporodokia, and they give the fungus its common name, the coral spot fungus. The sporodokia produce spores throughout the season, winter, and into the next spring. Again, pruned branches on the orchard floor and in brush piles also continue to produce viable spores, so these pruned branches should be burned. Nectria twig blight is considered a minor disease of apple. It's most common on Rome but has also been noted on Empire, Fuji, Macintosh, Northern Spy, Granny Smith, and others. The pathogen has a very wide host range in our region and can cause cankers and dieback in stressed or damaged trees from dozens of other tree species. Accordingly, fungal inoculum can readily come from surrounding forest and landscape trees. The asexual spores are spread by rain splash and infect wounded tissues. Wet conditions after harvest really favor the development of nectaria twig blade on apple. Those wounds on harvested fruit, the, the stem wounds, they're very slow to heal. In June and in, into early summer, symptoms of nectaria twig blade become prominent. Basically, we start to see new shoots wilting, the leaves turn brown. We may even see shepherd's crook symptoms that are very similar to fire blight. But there are some key differences that will help you in diagnosing nectria twig blight versus diagnosing fire blight. First of all, in, in a situation where we see shoots wilting with fire blight, we normally see blackening and necrosis symptoms along the main vein of these infected leaves. And that's a, a key symptom of the fire blight pathogen that's killing the leaves as it's wilting them as well. Also with fire blight, we'll typically see bacterial ooze on the stems. We don't see that at all uh, in this nectaria situation. But what we do see is at the base of wilted shoots, we see canker formation in, in Nectria twig blade. And so that's what's happening here. We're seeing the Nectria pathogen, it forms shallow cankers that gradually girdle the stem. As the stem girdles, then these shoots will wilt and die. And so that's the major difference and, and the factor to uh, diagnose Nectria twig blade early. So to see that canker, see the, the wilting shoots, and then later in the season, we're going to see the, the orange fruiting bodies on those twigs. And that, that again is a sign of the nectar pathogen.